We've all seen the public statues around our towns, but how often do we take the time to look at the plaque or even wonder how it got there? Well, a new continuing education course at Bellevue College with historian Fred Pointer is taking a look at that with 12 works of art. So we asked him to share a few. Uh, Seattle has a long history uh, as a pioneer community. Public art has certainly been part of that and also our heritage and also as, as kind of a point of identity. And the first sculpture we're talking about is Chief Seattle. Well, you know, it really is one of the first public artworks that we have here in Seattle. Also one of the first publicly funded sculptures. In 1907, the city had money left over from the Denny Regrade project. And so they commissioned a local sculptor by the name of James Wen. Over the course of five years, Wen modeled this life-size statue of Chief Seattle, who was a Suquamish chief, local and tribal leader. What's really interesting is that when the sculpture was finally unveiled in 1912, it was received with a lot of fanfare. People loved it. They celebrated it. It's really ever since then become this iconic symbol of our city. Did it become different than the original concept? It did become very different. It was suggested to Wen that he model a figure of Mercury, the Greek god. And this was kind of a popular theme that you saw in a lot of other cities in the early 20th century. And Wen was was like, no, we need to do something different and a little bit more unique. And so it was Wen who came up with the idea for doing a, a full portrait of Chief Seattle. That sculpture was that old, it's beautiful. If anyone wants to know, it's on Fifth, Cedar, and Denny, right? That kind of intersection. Yes, correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Our next piece of art, untitled sculpture relief in concrete at the Rose Garden in Woodland Park. It actually was one of the very first public artwork sculptures done by a woman sculptor, Alice Robertson Carr. Mm. And in 1924, Alice was commissioned to do this piece by the Seattle Rose Society as part of a, a new rose garden in kind of what they call a bas-relief style, where you had these figures cavorting and dancing. And what's interesting about that is some of those same roses that you see in the garden today were part of the original plantings done in 1923. That's really cool. <laughs> this is no way yeah. I'm saying it's really cool. Next, Leif Erikson, the Shill Shoal Marina in Ballard. From quiet reflection, we go to uh, Stoic Warriors. Leif Erikson, the Viking explorer, a celebrated figure in Scandinavian culture. It really is a fitting figure for Ballard and Ballard's Nordic ties. A sculptor's name was August Werner, who was also a University of Washington professor for many years. And in 1959, Werner was commissioned by the Leif Erikson Lodge in Ballard to undertake this monumental figure of Leif Erikson. And what's interesting about the sculpture there is the lodge members originally wanted it included in the 1962 World's Fair oh. down at the Seattle Center. And going with some back and forth with the city, eventually it was decided to install it instead at Shoshul. Well, I think it worked out because it's in a beautiful location. The Waterfront Fountain, which is at the waterfront in Seattle. Is that the, is that, I'm, I'm trying to get, wrap my mind around which exact sculpture that is because there's several over there. Yeah, it's uh, it's a larger uh, fountain. It's a little bit more abstract, but it's done in, in a series of uh, bronze cast blocks and, and angular uh, shapes. The sculpture is really great because it's the last sculpture done by a sculptor by the name of James Fitzgerald. In 1973, Fitzgerald passed away, but his wife, Margaret Tompkins, who was also an artist, this final design was installed down at the waterfront. And in 1974, it was unveiled as kind of a tribute to Fitzgerald's work. He was very well known for doing a lot of different fountain sculptures uh, that evoked the Pacific Northwest, the woods, the water this really kind of hidden gem down along Seattle's waterfront that pioneered and put in place by this powerful uh, artist couple. And of course, the one that we know and love because it's right across from King Five, the Ken Griffey Jr. statue. Yeah, yeah, that one is great. Uh, the sculptor is Lou Sella. And in 2017, we were able to celebrate that as part of the Mariners and their first ever National Baseball Hall of Famer. 
it's great to see that piece is there and also the care sometimes that goes into maintaining a sculpture. Not long after it was first installed, there was some vandalism done to the bat. Somebody ripped the baseball bat off, but you know, and like all kinds of public artworks that, that we care for, it was able to be repaired in, in a timely way. And, and that's where it stands as a tribute today. So get this, Fred is also releasing a book on Portland sculpture history. We have the details on both of the books, plus how to enroll in his continuing education course at Bellevue College, all on our website.